Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022-23 Panini Select Basketball 6 box half case pick your team number 3 from jazbeescasebreaks.com here on Wednesday, hump day. Big thanks everybody for getting into it. Half case from a fresh case. If you have Mosaic 390 next to your name, that means you won that team in that filler break. And before I pull the remaining teams out for that filler, Zach, you got last spot mojo with the Sacktown Kings. Sacktown, Bay Area, and back down. All right, there's the case right there. Select was the case that they gave me. Why is this not in our inventory system? Come on, people. There, uh, they, no one put the case number in the notes area. Someone's going to get fired. All right. We're not firing anybody. I'm kidding. Lottie Dottie, select basketball likes to potty, ladies and gentlemen. Was Sean Connery, James Bond, Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade? We were talking about how The Rock is like a James Bond movie. That theory's been out there for a little bit. I like that, Jeremy. I'd like to think that Sean Connery was, is James Bond. James Bond became... A historian, a professor at the end, chasing after the Holy Grail. All right, let's uh, use a die right here. We'll go one, two, three for the left six, four, five, six for the right six. It's going to be the right six. No, he was Dr. Henry Jones, senior sister. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what they'd like you to think. You think former MI6 is going to it's going to use their their given names throughout? You think James Bond's his real name? Yeah. He obviously changed identities to become Dr. Henry Jones Sr. and ended up siring Indiana Jones. You were named after the dog? <laughs> I had a lot of fond memories of that dog. <laughs> Jan, you crack me up. Are you, are you, I feel like you're giving me like AI. Are you, are you an AI bot? I feel like you're giving me AI-generated answers. Yes, we know who James Bond is and who he was written by and who he was based on. <laughs> we watch things too, you know, Jan. We, we, learn, we know things too. Captain Obvious. We're just having fun, Jan. Because of the speculation we were talking about earlier. That, uh, that James Bond was also using a code name in The Rock as James Bond. So we're trying to have a little fun saying that Sean Connery could be James Bond. That, no, that, I feel like that's exactly what a bot would say. And then I'd, I'd, get, a, I'd get a definition of what AI is from Jan. <laughs> There's Osmani Dieng. Four out of ten for the Thunder. Seth with the Thunder. That's exactly what I'm saying, Jeremy. Dr. Henry Jones could be his alias. Have I ever seen Collateral with Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx? Yes. Now it's been a minute or two. And before you say it, Jan, yes, I know that, that Collateral is, uh, is directed by Michael Mann highlighting the... Uh, and one of the best movies to highlight... Los Angeles in its truest form. Similar to the movie Heat, also by Michael Mann. 
Chet Holmgren, rookie tricolor. I like that one too, Seth. Got an out of 10. You got a Chet Holmgren tricolor. Good start. There's Jake LaRavia, two color jersey. Yeah, collateral is pretty good. I need to do a rewatch of that, to be honest with you. I don't think I've seen it in a minute or two. 37 out of 49. And there's a Kawhi Leonard to two now. You should see collateral, Jan. Devin, Heat is your, your favorite movie? Your all time? How many times have you seen Heat? Should we have a Heat off? I love Heat. I've, I've seen that dozens of times. Trey Young. 30 times? I might have, I, I don't know if I've seen it 30 times. I've seen it a lot though. Probably 30 times. It's Colin Sexton. Devin, have you seen the, uh, have you heard the the podcast, the Heat Minute by Minute podcast? I haven't done it. But, um, but uh, I heard it's really good. Tyrese Maxey, Sensations to 10. I like that. Sixers, Nathan. Yes, John Jackson. The mag changes in shoot and maneuver in Heat, maneuvering in Heat is excellent. Um, now, John, John, you know what else I've heard? I heard a lot of, uh, a lot of gun guys will say that Heat is one of the best movies that accurately depict the gun. Like if it's like a Beretta 92F and they shoot that, it's, a, it's what a Beretta sounds like. Like if someone's shooting an automatic, it, that, it, that's exactly what that automatic sounds like. So they said the, the, the gun to sound accuracy was uh was on point i don't know guns that well but that's what the gun guys tell me i've got i know some gun guys there's a uh, benedict mathurian 25 out of 99 for the pacer that's gonna be for david b a nice season all right Box one, box two. Yeah, I haven't listened to it, Devin, but podcasting has been my new make it through the day routine. Yeah, I'm going to have to, I haven't listened to it. I know of it, but I hear it's good. So they just pretty much go minute by minute on heat and they'll do a whole episode based on that minute. It's kind of, I think that and a couple other podcasts. I know there's like these Star Wars minute guys that do Star Wars movie review. Like they'll go by minute by minute. So I heard that's um, so that, that's kind of a thing if anybody's into that sort of stuff. Also, Devin, did you know, you probably know this if you've watched enough of the special features on on the Heat movie, that it was originally a made-for-TV movie that Michael Mann did in the 80s. And so I think you can still find bits and pieces of that on YouTube. I forget what it was called. I think maybe it was called L.A. Lockdown or something like that. But it's like with cheesy 80 actors and like, you know, cheesy clothes. And then, uh, but like some of the, a lot of the same lines are still there from the original movie. So it's a good example of like, of like what proper actors can do with the same, with the same material. So the, <laughs> like when they're in the coffee shop scene, they'll be like. What do you mean, like ball games and barbecues? If you see me coming around the corner, brother, I'm going to put you down. It's Chet Holmgren. Ah, God, I, I would agree with that. But the charges using the blank rounds don't actually resemble a real 55. 556 carbine had to be audio editing. All right, fair enough. 
I think for the most part. Better than other movies, right? There's Andrew Wiggins. Throwback Relic. Timberwolves. It's going to be for Nicholas in Minnesota. 69 out of 75. I had coffee with Macaulay half an hour ago. 150 out of 249, Wendell Moore Jr., Minnesota. Man, doing uh, do, doing like the Al Pacino lines from Heat, always fun. And we got a Keegan Murray, 23 out of 25, courtside tie-dye. Nice. Zach Sullivan, Sacramento Kings, last spot mojo. Give me all you got! Give me all you got! Here's Zach Levine for the Timberwolves. That's for Nicholas, 11 out of 75. Yeah, that's right. There's Keegan, Holly. There's Jimmy Harden, 008 out of 149. His brother Chris, twin brother, I think, right? Twin brother Chris was drafted this year. And there's Ray Allen. Nice X-Factor jersey. And that I did not know. Al Pacino's going to be a dad? How old Al Pacino? Twenty-seven out of seventy-five. You bought your first surround sound system, Devin says, when he came out on DVD. That was awesome. Yeah, I've uh, I don't think I originally saw it in theaters, but I think I did see. I want to say I did see it again when it was re-released at like a little indie theater around here, for, for something. But but yeah, that sound the sound is good. He's 86 or 97, somewhere around there. Oh, well. 002 out of 175. I suppose I still have uh, hope to give my parents grandchildren. And I'm in my 80s. If they live that long. There's Anthony Edwards die cut. Timberwolves. But if they hang on, if they hang on, I might be able to, to, to make that happen. Nice Jeremy Sohan. He's going to have a nice... He had a pretty decent season last year. Spurs, Mark Russo. And now with Wenbanyama, with rising tides lift all boats. Yeah, I mean... At that age... How... Uh, yeah... You might have to ask for a DNA test. De Niro had a kid too, Devin said. Well, cause she's got a great ass, and you've got your head all the way up it. <laughs> I think Hank Azario was in it soon. When I think of ass, a woman's ass. Devin, me and my cousins and some other friends watch that movie Heat a lot. One of our favorite lines from that is uh, when Pacino yells after the, uh, the early in the movie, the scene with Ralph, maybe? No, not Ralph. Well, that Ralph, too. Sit down! Um, when he goes see the guy, the guy in the jungle, he says, the give me all you got scene. When he's leaving, he goes, don't waste my mother effing time. Say that a lot when, when our friends are jamming each other up. No, not T Tone Loke's uh, Tone Loke's cousin. Where he says, my brother Richard. Richard? 
<laughs> Is he here right now? No, my, my brother Richard, he coming in from Phoenix. Ah, oh, Phoenix. By the time I get to Phoenix, she'll be rising. She'll leave a note right on the door. <laughs> blank check. That's a good one. For, don't look from a choose from blank check. Is that a blank check reference? There's Carl Anthony Towns, three color patch and autograph. If you took blank check, a blank check reference in the stream in the chat was not on my bingo card when I woke up this morning. One out of ten, Carl Anthony Towns, Nicholas with the uh, T Wolves. Jabari Smith Jr., Zach Levine for Matthew and the Bulls. And Apollo Bancaro. This might be premier level for Nathan and Orlando. Think check. Is that that's where the kid finds a backpack with a blank check inside, with a mob checkbook or something like that inside, and he writes like a million dollars and cashes it. Who cashes? A lot of a lot of plot holes in them. <laughs> There's Oshai. Agvaji to 249. Oh, sorry, Jan. I missed Jan was saying Al Pacino had his girlfriend take a DNA test on the child since she had also been with Eastwood, Mick Jagger, and one other I can't remember. Well, with that group, I say the third was Warren Beatty. Did I ever act in town? No, not my thing. 82 out of 249. Ayo Desunmu to 249. Matthew with the Bulls. Oh, he get, he gets hit by a car driven by a mob saw, mod boss, ruins his bike, so he gives him a blank check for him to cover cost of his bike and uses his computer for the amount of a million dollars. All right. Yeah, if if a mob gives me a blank check, I'm not not gonna. I'll probably put less money on it. Three out of forty nine. Chet Holmgren. Warren Beatty still married to Annette Benning. <laughs> That's cute, Jan. It's awfully romantic of you. No way he has relations with other women. He's married. <laughs> to 199, Pascal Siakam. Jaden Ivey, Detroit. And Christian Braun, I feel like, had a decent NBA final, right? Rookie Silver, concourse level. That's for Denver. That's going to go to David B. You know what? Yeah, if Tops or Lee for one of those guys does a heat set, I'd get into it. Or maybe, like, a, they'd have to... Maybe they do, like, a Goodwin... Or no, that's Upper Deck. Oh, I guess Upper Deck could do it, too. Do like an Allen and Ginter with Heat actors from Heat in the set. So the backpack comes in because he takes it to the bank to cash. Friend of the bank is helping the mom launder money, so he thinks the kid was sent by the mom to cash the check. Okay, so that plot hole is filled right there. What movie was that? Never owe the mob a million. Just ask Denzel. Was that training day? Jake, 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 Jake. Yo, Jakey. Man, that was a cast though, Devin. He, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, uh, the guy from Top Gun, Val Kilmer, <laughs> the guy from Top Gun, Iceman from Top Gun,
Ashley Judd. Tom Sizemore was in it. Man, it among uh, Hank Azaria had like a bit part in it. Man, what a, what a movie. I might watch that tonight. John Voight, right? John Voight was in it. Wes Studi. Natalie Portman was in it. That was one of her first, I think, post... What was that? The, the Assassin movie that she was in? The Professional? Was that afterwards? Soon afterwards? Hank Azaria in there. Kevin Gage is Wayne Grow. Wayne Grow. Wayne Grow. Henry Rollins was in it. Tone Loke. We mentioned Tone Loke. Jeremy Piven was Dr. Bob. Give me your shirt. Okay. Give me your tie. My, my, my daughter gave Just give me your tie. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. This is great. Danny Trejo. Who did this to you? Wayne Crow. Wayne Crow. Recently talked about uh, heat with my cousins a little while ago. My cousin has a theory that that uh, is that Robert Dino was actually not a criminal mastermind. Fifty-two out of seventy-five. LeBron James. Would he have ever gone back? For Wayne Grow, yeah, I mean, he was pretty much out. The heat was around the corner. He was not disciplined. And suddenly, some 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 cheap hood Wayne Grow. I mean, or is that just the lesson that's to be learned that that sometimes the pride comes before the fall? That hubris. Once you once you once you step just enough away from that discipline. That's when things fall apart if you don't stick to your guns. There's Rudy Gobert, Timberwolves. It'll be for Nicholas. A lot of, a lot of life lessons to be learned in movies like Heat and Training Day, The Godfather. One and two, not three. Nothing to be learned in three. The only thing you learn in Godfather 3 is when you try to get out, and they pull you back in. RJ Barrett to 299. RJ Barrett tricolor. Scotty Barnes. We got another Chet Holmgren here. A lot of life lessons to be learned in Home Alone. How to make um, how to make what are those machines called? The the Reuben sandwich machines. You know what's basically what mousetrap is. You start one thing and it kicks off another thing that kicks off another thing. Manfred Mann machine. This is Benedict Mathurian. Where's Jan? Jan will know. There's Jaden Ivey to 149. Very nice white parallel here for select. That's going to go to Ed and Rube Goldberg machines. That's exactly what it is. Not Rube and Sandwich machines, although that sounds more delicious. Oh, yeah. Untouchables with Costner and Sean Connery. I'm obviously a big fan of the Sean Connery. He's a pretty great actor. But yeah, what, what are you willing to do? Remember that, that part? Jabari Smith Jr., 249. Rube Goldberg machines. Remember, uh, remember... Goldberg from uh, Mighty Ducks. Your favorite Costner is Perfect World? I don't think I've ever heard of that. 
I feel like in my head, that's a blend between the perfect game movie where he's pitching and Waterworld. So I feel like he's a pitcher in Waterworld. And Dennis Hopper is going after him. Frank says, I did a rewatch of Whiplash recently. And uh, yeah, that movie was is pretty awesome, I think. It reminds me a lot of uh, autumn, the autumn my days in the music world, in the classical music world. Very competitive. Not like that. But there, there, there were some uh, music teachers that were like that. Perfect world. Costner, Clint directed it. Did he do the Did he do the score as well? I was indeed a band nerd, kind of. Uh, so I was classically trained in the clarinet. I haven't played in a while, but I'm classically trained in the clarinet. And so I was too snobby for, uh, for band. So when I got to uh, high school, to be in spring orchestra, um, you'd have to be in fall marching band. And uh, there was no way I was doing fall marching band, which is for nerds, right? I'm not doing marching band. Dress, dress up in a silly uniform and walk around a football field? No thanks. It's for nerds. So I refused. I said, I'm not going to do it. And I didn't. <laughs> so for the entire fall, I spent doing stupid marching band songs all football season long ostracized by by people in band because because they were because uh, I didn't I was still in the program but I just didn't have to do all the stupid marching band. no 6 a.m. practices no formations no marching nothing like that I said no thanks and then it got even worse because one day so they put me like in when the in third clarinet which was a waste third clarinet and I knew I was better than everybody in there and so there was one rehearsal session. Here's uh, Paul George of 65. It was clarinets where the winds were doing especially terribly. So he does like the thing where it's like, all right, clarinet one, go. Okay, stop. Clarinet two, go, stop. Clarinet three, go, stop. Clarinet four, go, stop. And they were just doing that. And everyone's screwing up. Everyone's just like, okay, forget it, stop. You, you go, all right, forget it, stop. You're... And I went, I was, and I was, they buried me in like fifth chair and, and third clarinets or something like that. And uh, they had me do the, the measures that everyone was effing up on. I obviously nail it. And so uh, that day, he puts me into second chair. He couldn't put me in first chair clarinet because I wasn't doing And the guy, actually, the first chair was better than me. I couldn't do first chair clarinet because the, that kid was in marching band, nerd. Um, <laughs> Simon to 49 Portland, Chad B. And uh, I was in second chair. And I still didn't have to march with the nerds. And then I got to do beautiful spring symphony orchestras in the spring and do proper music. Which was awesome. But no one liked me. But I didn't care. Because they were all nerds. It was Bones Highland. And then eventually, I think they, they eventually split it where you didn't have to do marching band to do this. So like, I think by junior, senior year, I was, I was able to, uh, to just do spring and not do fall. So then the ice had melted by then. And then I was like friends with some of the nerds there. Bones Highland tie-dye autographed to 25. Denver Nuggets. Cor yes, correct, Rex. That's essentially, that's, that's what the, the movie of my life is going to be. I was a punk rocker fighting against the man in high school band. And like Frank says, waking up early is for the birds. Forget that. 
Here's Walker Kessler. It's not for the birds, it's for the jazz. David B, speaking of music. Where are those nerds today? I don't know. Probably doctors and lawyers. Nerds. There's Walker Kessler, blue to 49. You know, probably working for Silicon Valley tech companies. Bunch of nerds. Maybe those, maybe I should shut up. Because, uh, Devin, you might be right. Those nerds are maybe buying into card breaks. I love band nerds. I mean, band people that were in high school bands. Especially marching bands. <laughs> Have I com just completely misread my entire audience? Everyone's like, actually, I was in marching band, yeah. But at least I wasn't a theater nerd. Even worse, an improv nerd. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. In all seriousness, Sean, you're right. It's, it does seem crazy how far away high school was and how, how stupid all that was. It was and is. But I don't know, at the time, you know, it's the most important thing in the world, Mom. What do you mean I can't go to homecoming? It's so unfair. I just want to hang out with my friends. I don't want you, what you It's like you've never been in high school. You don't understand. It's Marjan Beauchamp to 149. But that's it. That's, that's, that's what high school was. Everything is important. If you're not doing it, you're missing out on something. You're going to be called a nerd by Joe. And you don't want that to happen. Rudy Gobert, David B. in the Jazz. But Joe's going to call me a nerd on the YouTube stream. I'm not. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Go or don't go. Just be, just be you. That's the, that's the easiest thing. Sometime around sixth grade, Rex wanted to play the sax. I couldn't do band during the summer because you had to go visit your dad in San Fran. What? They wouldn't let you do band? I mean, school's not in session in the summer, right? It's 249. 249 out of 249. Who played mu music for your games? The game of life? Here's Josh Hart, 34 out of 49, Knicks. That's for uh, the New York Knicks. That's going to go to Jackson in the Knicks. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. Ooh, and nice. Jabari Smith Jr., rookie autograph, red parallel. Red Rover, Red Rover, call Jabari Smith Jr., red auto right over. 72 out of 99. That is for Matthew Shira and the Rockets won that team in the filler. Nice. So you couldn't do band in the summer because you had to go to California. Oh, there was summer band. I see. 
Well, yeah, I mean, you... I'm with Frank. You can't take a saxophone to California? A lot of, a lot of regulations in California, but we do allow saxophones to cross state lines, Rex. And the, the playing of the saxophone is, is well and good here in California, in spite of what, what outsiders may think. There's L&B to 299. I will not stand for that kind of slander against my state. We are regulatory happy, but we are not regulating musical instruments across state lines. You could have brought that to California and worked on the, worked on the sax. Well, that's on you. You never touched the entire summer? Why not? San Francisco in the summer? Playing some sax in the park? Man, saxy Rex. You could be playing some, some, yeah, there's a lot of sax in San Francisco. Sad sax, happy sax, romantic sax, angry sax. I mean, you could have been, you, my tie-dye Keegan Murray right there. I mean, yakety sax. You know, you could you you could have been the sexy sax man. You could have been Steve Sax. You were busy, too busy thinking and playing with the girls. Imagine how many more girls you've been playing with if you were being like do 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 I'm Joe for JazzPeaceCaseBreaks.com. That was Pick Your Team Three. Select basketball. I'll see you next time for the next thing. Bye-bye.